Another day of adventures with Wes and Jeff, and it's Wes and I am in the state of Arkansas, about an hour southwest of Little Rock, Arkansas, at Hot Springs National Park. It's number 39 for me on my list of going to all of the national parks here in the United States. Center at the Fordyce Bathhouse at Hot Springs National Park in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And this is one of the most interesting visitor centers that I have visited out of the 39 parks that I have visited thus far. This one is a three story bathhouse uh, from the day in the 1920s. And the second floor, there's three floors of it. Second floor has the standard uh, stuff about that they inform you about in the visitor centers about the different types of animals of course that are located at this park but the raccoon of course the squirrel um, the different types of birds but it also explains about how the water is heated it goes through lots of um, sediment in order to get down. Once the rainwater falls, it goes all the way down a long way. And then when it comes back up, it is hot. Um, so it hits some thermal activity down below, but it takes 4,000 years for that water to go from rainwater all the way down and then back up. So this is a pretty unusual area. Uh, this explains about uh, the hot springs area from the late 1800s to the early 1900s when they developed up to 27 different bathhouses that people came from all over the country to experience the health effects of this water that's supposed to be so magical. And it did help a lot of people back in the day. Uh, remember, they didn't have the medicines and things that we do nowadays, so they had to figure out some way in order to heal their um, ailments. So this was one way that they were able to do it. The Native Americans actually in the 1500s, uh, the Spanish explorers came in this area and they showed them these hot springs and the miracle that um, it actually um, cured some of them. Um, and so that's how they got to know this as a place where um, they should develop some bathhouses. And this is what the bathhouse row looked like back in the day here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So there are quite a few of them. Like I said, there were like 27. But now there's only about eight. 
two of them that actually have the spas in them still and the others uh, there's one that's a brewery as well as there's one that's a uh, spa uh, store where you can get souvenirs and different things um, water bottles because there is a spring where you can get your own water the mineral water but pretty cool uh, visitor center here in Hot Springs National Park. I'm in the visitor center at the Hot Springs National Park and this particular room, it's kind of an interesting visitor center because it's an, one of the old bathhouses from the 1920s and it's a Fordyce um, bathhouse and at the top floor is three stories and the top floor has this interesting big gymnasium a workout room and it has let me flip the camera around it has a wooden heavy barbells it has the bowling pins because there was a um, there was a bowling alley here there's an old time ball that they used for working out they had uh, the, the bars, they had uh, ropes swinging from the, and so it's pretty interesting, all of the different uh, uh, things that they had to offer here. Uh, they recreated it so that you can enjoy it. Uh, so this was the gymnasium um, that was unique to this particular bathhouse. Here at the Fordyce Bathhouse at Hot Springs National Park, and this is the uh, bath hall, and uh, this is the fountain that is there. And the interesting part is this beautiful stained glass on the ceiling that's uh, recessed in. But this is the bath hall where men came and. Uh, here in Hot Springs and pretty cool. All this marble and this cherry wood on every single door. This is, has, has uh, been preserved like you wouldn't believe. It's so cool. It does feel a little institutionalized. Uh, everything, every room echoes, but I bet you it was bustling back in the day in the 1920s and 30s. I'm at the Sunset Trail, and it's actually a very long trail through here at the park at Hot Springs. However, I'm just going to find a nice spot along this trail in order to watch the sunset. I'm on the Sunset Trail here at Hot Springs National Park, and I'm headed off to here. I'm right here, and I'm headed off to Balance Rock for Sunset. So let's see if I can make it there by sunset. I only have like 15 minutes. So I really got to book it. I'm on the sunset trail and I'm trying to make sunset. 
on the Sunset Trail to a place called Ballots Rock. It's where, and it's all uphill. So, trying to make it, it's really pretty here though. The trees are really turning colors and here at Hot Springs National Park, I'm out of breath already, because it's straight up. But it's only supposed to be 0.9 of a mile. So I only have about 10 minutes to make sunset, which I'm really trying to do. We're already in the golden hour. So it's kind of a nice trail through the woods, but let me flip. you see, well, can't really tell, but it's uphill. It's so straight up, but I'm determined I'm gonna make it. I am so proud of myself. I had to sprint down the Sunset Trail in order to get here before sunset over these balanced rocks at Hot Springs National Park. So I caught it right before the sunset. It's really pretty. I'm just gonna sit here and get my breath and enjoy the sunset here at Balanced Rock. That is the sunset over Balanced Rock that I was trying to get. Perfect. Behind me is Superior Bathhouse that has been converted into a brewery and a pub. And it's supposed to have really good beer. The beer has been made with the hot springs water that comes out of these mountains. So it's unique. One's a hotel, one's a brewery pub, one's the visitor center for the National Park Service, and another one is a store, but the others are not open. But this is down the row here of uh, Bathhouse Row at Hot Springs National Park.
This is along the North Mountain Loop, and it's a nice little stream that cascades across this, and there's a little foot area where you can walk across for the trail. So it's kind of cool. Beautiful fall colors. Which is three and a half miles up to the top of North Mountain. Really pretty. I'm the only one driving the trail this morning. It's around 8:30. It's really nice. Places to pull out. the North Mountain Observation Area and this is overlooking all of the area of Hot Springs which is a town of about 35,000 people and it's a great view from up here you can see a long way but there's some fog that's just like right along where the um, right along where the uh, base of the hill is. So you can see it it's lingering right there. They got some reservoirs and things off in the distance, a dam. And so it's really pretty. It's just a little, a little time after sunrise, much cloudier today. But, um, you can walk up here or you can drive. It's a zigzag road. They call it the zigzag mountain. This is the Hot Springs Mountain Trail that goes down to the campground. It's only 0.8, and at the bottom of it, there's a stream, the Hot Springs Stream, that comes through right by the campground, and beautiful shots, a nice trickling water. Really enjoyed that area of the park. The shortcut trail, this one goes down to the town, and 
prior to automobiles, uh, horseback riders would use this route as a shortcut down to the main road in 1884. It, uh, the road was constructed and today hikers use it to access the Grand Promenade Trail at the base. But this is a nice little short trail as well. It's only 0.2, but it's extremely st steep because it comes up to the North Mountain. There's a North Mountain, the West Mountain, and they're both very nice trails. Um, and I'm right now on the scenic uh, drive up to the top, which zigzags its way up the mountain hot springs mountain trail this one um, circles the mountain returning back to this location along the way you can go to goat rock north mountains or any other destinations in the park so it just circles around it's kind of a cool little trail as well lots of little information uh, informative uh, plaques along the way. This one talks about the night skies uh, from up at this point. Trees have fallen and mesa trees have fallen. The leaves have fallen off the trees and so it's nice. This is the very short peak trail that just goes from one end to the next and it's only 0.1. So it's only like one block, but it's really pretty to just walk through the trees and get from one side of the mountain to the other. I'm at the mountain tower, which is the observation tower that's 360 degree view here on the top of the North Mountain. In 1877, Woolman built a wooden observation tower on the Hot Springs Mountain that was 80 feet tall. The tower became the most popular attraction with the public and rewarded visitors with the picturesque views of the surrounding area. Sometimes between, sometime the, between 1885 and 1895, the tower was struck by lightning and burned to the ground. And then in 1906, the Woolman Tower was replaced with the steel tower by the Arkansas National Bank President, Charles Ricks. So uh, the new observation tower, this one, or the Rex Tower was 165 feet tall and included an Otis elevator and was equipped with a high-powered telescope. The total cost to erect the Rex Tower was only $20,000. In 1971, it was declared unsafe and they dismantled it. So this particular tower, that was the one between. So there's been three towers total. So this one, the current tower, the Hot Springs Mountain Tower opened its doors to the public on June 3rd of 1983. And it stands 216 feet tall and it cost $1.5 million to build it. So I'm 216 feet up at the observation tower here at the top and the views are really cool of uh, all the pretty trees, the fall colors, uh, and downtown hot springs. So, and there's a lot of information. Um, and it's just the whole thing, the whole 365 degrees is lined with uh, information and memorabilia back from the days of the, the um, bathhouses that were constructed here. But um, you can see some of the trails and it's just really pretty. That's the downtown with the bath house road and the 
the colorful trees. There's the Arlington. Arlington's right there. And that's Bathhouse Row. So Paul Cal, you see the shadow of the tower. You have to read all of these little informations about this is the North Vista. They've uh, kind of been dry here, so their fall colors are just now coming in. However, um, it's going to be a fast fall for them, for the leaves. Looks like smoke off in the distance, but it's not smoke. It's just fog that's laying in the low-lying areas to the north. Uh, a bit more cloudy today, uh, kind of adds a contrast. That's the highway on the way in, it's kind of reflecting there. But, so, um, the fee to come up to the top of the observation tower is uh, $12, so not too bad. Um, and then for um, senior citizens that are over 55, which I am now, um, it was only $10. So uh, definitely worth the trip up. Uh, take the elevator. There's stairs too, but uh, I've been hiking quite a bit, so I took the elevator up. In addition to the bathhouses that were established here, uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, up to like 1921, 23, they were, um, it was notoriety uh, because of the fact that Al Capone and a few of the other gangsters made this like their hideaway and they came in here. And uh, they finally, in the 19, late 40s or 50s, got rid of all the crime element, the gambling, and all of that. So that's uh, all about it here. Um, there's Al Capone and a couple of his gangsta buddies. But it tells about the history and the, um, the geology of this area. Very informative. So the observation, the mountain observation tower has two floors. So there's an outdoor area on the top deck and then all of the information and uh, memorabilia and stuff from back in the day. It tells about the history um, of this area, this uh, hot springs area. But uh, this is all open air. So you can kind of feel the breeze uh, from 216 feet above, so kind of cool. This is one of the trail shelters and it was uh, built back in May of 1924 along the ridge line between the North Mountain and the Hot Springs Mountain. It was part of the construction of the trail that led down to the uh, Gulpa Gorge campground. The building was a small stone open air structure that provided hikers with a place to rest, get out of the rain and just take in the beautiful views. So four more of these shelters of varying sizes were built in the park. These shelters were built using native stone and logs and were topped with redwood shingle roofing. 
Over time, the effects of the weather began to break them down and many of the roofs fell in, making the shelters unsafe. In 1960s, some of the shelters were removed, but a few were repaired and remain in use today. Today, three of the original shelters still stand. The first shelter um, was, uh, was built in, uh, re, uh, refurbished in 1964 on the Hot Springs Mountain intersection. Honeysuckle Trails and the third shelter was the second overlook on the West Mountain. So it uh, gave people good views of, of the trail and it provided shelter. So um, that was built by the CCC, the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps. So natural stones. Very, very cute little shelter and uh, actually very purposeful. at the Goat Rock Trail and I'm gonna just take the .99 down to Goat Rock and take a look at the scenic views here at Hot Springs. It's just a really pretty with all the trees and this one's got a, a nice little grade here that goes down to Goat Rock. We'll check out Mr. Goat Rock and uh, see what that has to offer it's kind of a cool trail as you can see I'm the only one in the parking lot uh, this um, information sign talks about the Native Americans that lived here and the Nova Salite uh, call light that um, is in the surrounding mountains and they were used for um, making, uh, making their arrowheads and things like that. So, uh, it's, it's still in the area and you can see where they're actually mining it off in the distance. I tried to get a picture of it. I don't know if it came out, but, uh, kind of cool. So this is the Goat Rock Trail that we're going to take now, uh, down through the trees. And on the hillside it's a pretty short hike but I wanted to check out Mr. Goat Rock since I was at Balance Rock at sunset I was gonna try and catch this at sunrise but it's a little overcast this morning so I wasn't able to get uh, down here and uh, very good pictures of it but it's a nice little trail to walk on um, all of these trails have inclines so as long as uh, you, you know you kind of time it and make it the best part of day that you want to do and uh, you don't overexert yourself the, all the trails are really short so uh, anybody that's in fairly good shape can do any of these trails so I strongly encourage Hiking on the uh, Goat Rock Trail here in Hot Springs, and it's a really nice, pretty much level. It does uh, go down the hill just a little bit, but it's uh, nice and cool in the morning hours, like before 10 o'clock. This is November the 1st, 2022. I'm having a Pretty nice weather here in the 70s uh, during the day and it gets down to 50 at night. But it's a nice hiking weather. I'm the only one on the trail. It's midweek, so uh, like this park only gets 1.5 million visitors per year. 
here, but a very different park. Uh, and when you're hiking, uh, it gives you a lot of time to think about your life, your, and reflect back on uh, things that you've done in your your lifetime, and uh, it's really nice and peaceful time to kind of reflect on those things and appreciate the things that you have in life and the people in your life, your family and friends. So uh, and I think it's one of the reasons we have national parks and uh, these wonderful treasures uh, for the diversity of our uh, environment and to have appreciation for it as well as to get outdoors and, and enjoy the uh, things there are to see in the United States. So this is uh, the Goat Rock Trail up at the top of the mountain and it's very peaceful and I'm really enjoying myself. Here in Hot Springs, uh, there's a couple spots where uh, even some of the locals come to get and fill up their water jugs at the spot where you can uh, get the natural mineral fed uh, waters. So they got all their jugs, they're filling them up free of charge. You don't have to pay anything for that. A lot of the hikers actually fill up their water bottles. But these folks are more than likely locals that are filling up their big jugs with wonderful mineral rich water from hot springs. In addition to Hot Springs National Park being located in downtown Hot Springs, Arkansas, this is the Arlington Hotel that was uh, built originally built back in 1883, and then it burned, and then they reconstructed it. But this has notoriety because of the history. Uh, the old Arlington Hotel located across the street on Arlington Lawn was the site of the infamous arrest of the New York Giants manager, John Muggsy McGraw. And he was apprehended by a US Marshal for unlawful gambling when he was caught pit pitching silver dollars into a saloon basket. Muggsy was later released, but the current Arlington Hotel built in 1924, this one has hosted such baseball notables as Babe Ruth, Lefty Groove, Hank Greensburg, Jimmy Fox, and Joe DiMaggio. So, famous. So this is the water and steam that's coming off of the natural waters that are coming. It's 146 degrees.
the Grand Promenade Trail. It's 0.5 and it goes along the backside of the bath houses. And it's, um, it's got brick and it's really nicely done. And it is just really pretty. It's um, ADA, ADA accessible. So I'm gonna do this little trail now along the backside of the bathhouses. Along the way there's uh, some of the, if the, if the water was flowing, the water would be coming right down the mountain here and uh, coming right down into town. And that's what they use at the hot springs bathhouses. And this is the little canal that the water is usually flowing through. Oh, I got a little chipmunk. He's right here. And I just go down through here. Oh, he ran away. But this is where the water, the hot springs water comes down from the mountain into town. And it's 143 degrees when it comes out of the ground. So along the Grand Promenade Trail, this is the hot springs, the hot waters, you can see the steam rising up out of it. The natural water that's came, it's hot. 143 degrees Fahrenheit. So. You can feel the heat just off of it as it's sprinkling through. But this is along the Grand Promenade Trail. Along the Grand Promenade Trail, there's many uh, markers that explain about the water here and the springs. This one's kind of interesting, gives you a good overview. This says that uh, water quality over time in January of 1859, the surveyors measured 54 springs in the area, numbering them according to their temperatures. The average recorded temperature of the hot springs was 134 degrees Fahrenheit, and their flow was measured at about 450 gallons per day. Today, with more modern methods of measurement, the average daily flow is just under 700,000 gallons per day, and the average temperature uh, is 131 so 54 springs in this area hot springs So along the Grand Promenade Trail, behind the bathhouses, you'll see this, just a pool of hot water coming up out of the ground and they've got it drained so it doesn't cascade into the town. But it's really hot. I'm not gonna touch it because it's too hot. It'll scald your hand. Down. 
down at Hot Springs. You can uh, fill up your water. He's doing it. Uh, a lot of the locals fill up their water and they get their free water, which is full of minerals and really good for you. So she knows the quality of this water that she's putting in these jugs. And uh, it's uh, better than buying it because it's free here. And it uh, is good. And it's good, she says. Awesome. That nice lady gave me a jug of water because I didn't have a container. It's back at the car. But she's like, here, I'll give you one. So the people are super sweet here. It's Arkansas. It's the Midwest. And but uh, so now I have a whole jug of that mineral water that I can uh, swig down between here and the airport and enjoy on my journey. Thank you so much for joining me on my two day adventure to experience Hot Springs National Park and learn more about the history and the interesting things to see and do here at this national park. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing to our channel to join us on visiting all the national parks here in the United States. Whatever you're doing today, get out to the great outdoors and do something that makes you smile.